as always, appreciate you guys coming out. Um, some quick thoughts on obviously the Michigan State game. Uh, you know, as I told our team, and I know you guys get tired of hearing it, I get tired of saying it. Uh, the competitive nature, uh, the competitive culture that we want is there. Our guys play with great effort, and, and that's one component of, uh, of winning. The next piece of it is execution, and you know we do a thing every Monday called Good, Bad, and Ugly, where we show you know the game where you know all three phases are in there. The whole team is a team meeting where we basically go through the film, kind of in a, what we call a newsreel fashion, where you see the good things that happen, some of the bad things that happen, and, and then obviously some of the things that are really, really bad. And we do that to, to coach our guys through, but it also helps the, both sides of the ball see the accountability necessary to show that. You know, all three phases have done some good things, but also some things we need to improve upon. And the tough part when you watch that is you get an opportunity to see um, exactly what I talk about. You know, when people hear the word execution, uh, you know, sometimes it sounds like coach jargon, but you know, there are a lot of instances on the tape against a top 10 team uh, like Michigan State. And again, I don't give Bell and his program credit for where they are and the job they've done this season. Um, but there's a lot of things on tape that really um, show that we're probably not as far away as it seems, but definitely not as close as it seems when it comes to competing. You know, I think in the last six weeks, uh, four top 10 teams that we faced and uh, we're competitive and we're playing with great effort, but not necessarily playing uh, probably with the, the, the detail necessary in terms of the execution of the things we need to get accomplished to be able to win um, these type of games. Um, and so to me, there's really no secret. Uh, I keep telling us the recipe for us winning, which in this Michigan State game, we, we actually won the turnover battle for the first time in five weeks. We got our hands on two turnovers uh, defensively and offensively. We had a really egregious uh, decision there in the uh, red zone with the interception that, that really was costly. Uh, but the thing we didn't do is we didn't eliminate the big plays. We had, I think, 15 plays of 12 or more yards on offense, and they had 16 plays of 12 or more yards on, from a def, uh, from their offense. And so, to me, I always say the two things needed to win a game are to win the big play battle, but also win the turnover battle. And then, you know, obviously with 13 penalties, uh, and I think five of them were the non-competitive type, where were offsides or false starts. And those are the things that we got to continue to work through. And uh, you know, again, when you play top 10 teams like Michigan State, there's very little room for error, very small margin uh, for error there. And, you know, those are the things when I come back on Monday after putting that game behind us and we start preparation, those are the things that, you know, kind of give me confidence that we're, like I said, a little bit closer than maybe what it seems, but not there yet. And, you know, our goal is to get there and get there as quickly as we can. Um, you know, as far as our game against Michigan, another top 10 team coming in here. Uh, you know, the great thing about it is here at home, um, it's the last opportunity to play here in the shell for some of our seniors and our players that have exhausted the eligibility. And, you know, it, it, this time of year, as I told our team, becomes kind of sentimental because it starts bringing closure to some things. And for some of these players, uh, these, these guys have never experienced a, a postseason game. You know, I don't think there's a, a player on our team that has played in a bowl game since the last one was there in 2016. And so our goal and the mission that we've kind of put on ourselves as a program is to find a way to, to get this done, to extend the season of some of these kids who have been through an awful, awful lot here uh, during their tenure. And so I have a lot of empathy for the group of seniors that we're uh, sending off uh, because of what they've been able to go through and what how they've really fought through a lot of adversity during their tenure here. And to still sit here, um, with two games guaranteed left in our season with an opportunity to, to again, advance the program. I talk about, you know, when I was part of some championship teams, you know, there is a, a very tough, hard climb from being a 10 win, a 10 win season to being a playoff contender. That, that, that one game from 10 to 11 is, is a big, hard step. And we're at that level here. We're going from a five win team to being a bowl eligible team. And to me, those are some of the toughest steps where you've really got to, you know, press forward. You've got to continue to fight. You've got to continue to find ways to uh, put ourselves in the best chance to get that uh, number six, which we haven't had in quite some time. So 
Uh, we're all motivated to do it against a good Michigan team that comes in to meet probably one of the better offenses that, that we, we will face in terms of balance. Those guys are very good up front. Their offensive line, I think their center uh, is phenomenal, a phenomenal player there and, and really does a good job kind of leading the way with them up front. Uh, got some capable guys on the outside. You know, number six is a guy that has made a bunch of plays for. I know they're a little banged up maybe at the running back position, losing uh, Blake Coral, who started out with a great, having a great year, but you know what? They're still Michigan. They've got players um, that are very, very capable, as we've seen the last couple of weeks, to, to step in and, and, and definitely continue uh, what they do. You know, defensively, uh, Aiden Hutchinson is as advertised, uh, will be probably one of the biggest uh, defensive playmakers that we faced um, this year. Uh, a mixture of size, speed, uh, tenacity, uh, really, really plays hard with a motor. Hit the other side of him, number 55, I think both those guys have 10 and a half sacks apiece. And so, again, we'll, we'll have our hands full with, with this group because they are a well balanced team, they're well coached. Uh, again, you know, they've done a great job of uh, not beating themselves and putting themselves in a position where they're competing for a Big Ten title, which I think, you know, will come down to their game behind uh, behind our game. I think they play uh, Ohio State the week after us. And so not to put that in their head, but I think they got a big game coming up. So uh, hopefully, you know, we can do the things we need to do to send our players here at home out a winner at home. Um, I like the effort the players are giving um, thus far as we uh, start our uh, game plan uh, for this type of team, and I'm excited for the week. So with that, I guess I'm about to say captains. We got four this week, uh, four guys that are finishing up their careers here as Terps, uh, Kenny Bennett, Brian Cobbs, Carlos Carrier, and uh, Lautez Rogers, who have all been here for some time and uh, will lead us, to, uh, lead us in our game against Michigan this week. We love our clients, and you'll see that if you trust us at the Jackman Small Group, the big dogs from the small firm. Find us online at bigdogsmallfirm.com. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Mike, the defense has taken a couple of lumps this year with injuries and everything. Uh, moving forward, and, you know, not you know looking at the numbers per se, but what from what you see on the field, what gives you cause for confidence that this defense is on the right track? And uh, if you could expand a bit on, uh, I guess, uh, Hassan Haskins and what makes him special for Michigan. Yeah, I mean, I think for our defense, the biggest thing that, that, that jumps out to us are the lapses and uh, focus is what it is. I mean, you know, I, I, I talk a lot of play. I was asked a question after the game where, you know, we gave up uh, an explosive play for the first touchdown and we were in main coverage. And usually main coverage is one of the best things you can do against flea flickers and double moves and, and plays like that. And, you know, a lapse in judgment uh, in terms of the technique we want to use out there results in a touchdown. And so to me, but then you'll have four or five series in a row where you see us really, for the most part, I thought, did a good job of trying to contain, you know, Kenneth Walker with our run defense. Uh, but then, as always, this guy is a guy that I told you breaks a lot of tackles, gets a lot of yards after contact, and those things started showing up late in the game. Um, I think we had 18 missed tackles that we charted, and to me, that's again, you know, those are fundamentals. Those are the things that, as coaches, we can correct. Uh, we will get corrected. So, you know, to me, I think on defense, it still comes down that we got our hands on some balls with some turnovers there, which was good to see. Uh, but then to limit the explosive plays, and most of the time the explosive plays come from our inability to, from losing leverage to, you know, maybe not having our eyes with the discipline we need to have when you play coverage the way we play. Um, as far as Hassan, Hassan Haskins, I mean, he's just a big athletic guy, um, makes a lot of big plays. You know, when you look at them in the passing game, they may not throw the ball necessarily down the field or over the top. They're a run first team. They've kind of adapted that personality that you saw out of you know Coach Harbaugh's time at Stanford, and even when he first get, got to Michigan, it's kind of like they've kind of uh, gravitated back to some of the, the the two tight end sets where they want to run the football and establish the run. And then in the passing game, most of their big plays in the passing game with number six tend to be the 
throw underneath and catch and run. He's exciting and explosive with the uh, ball in his hand. And, uh, he's a guy that we got to do a good job of trying to contain. Um, what, what do you think is the next step for Talia to be able to execute there in the red zone, the same way he does on the other parts of the field? I mean, how do you guys as a staff try to help him there? Yeah, I mean, to me, those are, you know, one first thing that comes to my mind is being able to run the ball a little better in the red area uh, to where, you know, we don't have to force ourselves into the throwing. You know, we, we had a design quarterback run where we missed the block on the DN and we had to tackle for a loss when we got down in there. So the thought going in is, hey, you know, one, because of how tight the box gets down there, the plus one runs with the quarterback help uh, offset the numbers without forcing us to throw it. But then, I mean, even on the interception, when you watch the tape, uh, if it's not there, we have a red zone philosophy of touchdown, check down. So you look to make the touchdown throw, and if it's not there, then you come down to your check down. And the check down, the back was open in the flat. You know, instead of pressing or forcing the ball, just take what the defense gives you. And to me, that's continued maturation at that position. Um, we'll continue to try to help them with how we call it down in there. And, you know, it, the, to be able to line up and maybe have some success running the football, take some pressure off the quarterback down there. Kind of following up on Talia, how do you feel like he's mentally progressed in terms of how he approaches um, his position? I know you mentioned earlier in the season, he tends to be somewhat erratic um, sometimes, but how do you feel like he's progressed till this point? I never used the word erratic, but okay. Just wanted to go on the record and say that. Um, as I've said before, you know, we've lost some games uh, in the last few weeks, and it wouldn't necessarily be because of our quarterback not playing well. Um, is he absolved of having made mistakes? No, not at all. And us as coaches and as players, I think we all can look at, at the tape and see there are some things we'd like to do better. As I've said before, this kid's a redshirt sophomore still. Um, he's probably, what, 14 games in now. I don't know the count as a starter. Um, and for some of the things that he's been able to accomplish and that he's doing, uh, he's definitely at least given us a chance going into some of these games because of the skill he, he, he possesses as a quarterback. Um, is he there yet? No, I think he will tell you that, and, and anybody in our program will tell you that. He's still a work in progress like our program in general. Um, and, you know, And so you know, the thing I've seen out of him, though, is I've seen him bounce back better. Um, there's nobody that's harder on himself than a quarterback. Um, I, I spend as much time with him and then anybody in our program um, and, and most of my time with him is talking him off the ledge in terms of making sure that he understands that, you know what, he and I are hip to hip, and I'm a big boy, so I can handle what you guys have to say about where we are as a program, and I'm gonna be a big papa bear and protect him uh, the right way as I should, but that, you know what, everybody looks to him for leadership, for him to have a positive impact on the program, and so nobody's sitting around here, woe is me, um, I know I'm not, and every week, after I watch the tape and I digest it and I get it out of my system, it's on to the next game, which is a great approach. And to me, that's what we're, I start, I'm starting to see that out of Leah with a bad play, instead of letting one bad play lead to another, lead to another. He's starting to understand the importance of getting by it, learning from it, and then trying to do better and not let it happen again. And I continue to see that development out of Leah. And to me, we'll be able to win with this kid around here uh, because he's progressing the way he needs to. Colby McDonald and especially Penny Boone early added some zip to the running game. What's your assessment of your young backs? You know, we feel good about where we are with the young backfield guys. I was glad to see uh, Colby get some opportunities. Um, what you saw is what we've had a chance to see. Um, we're looking for somebody that may be able to add that element to the run game. You know, the good thing about when you run the ball is that sometimes it's not always going to be blocked cleanly. and. The backs that I've been around, that, and I've been around some really talented backs in my career, fortunately, uh, they tend to make things happen even if it's not blocked correctly. And I think that's what uh, uh, young Kobe McDonald has shown us in practice and in training camp. And now, obviously, due to some injuries uh, there at the position group, he's now forced into uh, the role where we need more of him. And, uh, you know, in a perfect world, I would have liked to have seen us maybe had him a little more season, had played him a little bit more, but with some of the stuff we was getting out, we were getting out of challenge uh, that allowed uh, us to maybe not play him as much, but I'm excited about him um, as a runner. You know, Penny Boone is a guy that's a work in progress. What you guys saw, he's a big back. The things we saw that we recruited him, you saw in one run where he broke tackles, uh, 
had the ability to run away from people. And now what we've got to do is get that consistency out of him. And, and not just as a football player, but in every aspect of our program. And I think the more we see those things out of Penny, you know, kind of off the field, being consistent with his work habits and doing all the little things off the field that you'll continue to see him get better and better on the field for us. Good. Hey, Coach. Um, I know uh, Marcus Fleming was a guy that uh, got a little nicked up and um, you know, didn't see him on the depth chart. Just wanted to see if he would be available for this weekend or? Yeah, no, he won't be available. Um, I think he's having surgery tomorrow. But again, no BCEs. Uh, he's a guy that has stepped in and did a really good job here, you know, as a young player. But as we've learned, you know, injuries will be part of the game. We'll continue to coach the guys that are available to us. And, you know, I hate for Marcus because I thought he was starting to, to come on for us as a player. But luckily, it's not something that will maybe keep him out for an extended uh, period of time. He'll be done for the rest of this season. But um, he's got a bright future for us. If, if I could just ask a follow up, um, and I know after the Sean Jones and Dante Demas injury, you mentioned a lot of young guys like David McDougal, that opportunity to step up. So um, obviously a guy like Marcus with him out, um, you know, how do you see your young guys, you know, taking advantage of the opportunity ahead of them now? Yeah, you know, one of the guys that has really jumped out probably in the last week for us, uh, that you know, he's starting to play a little bit more on special teams is uh, Nick De Janeiro. Um, Nick has been kind of bouncing back and forth between our scout team and then helping us. You know, he had a broken, I think broken finger, a broken hand uh, for quite a few months here from training camp. And we finally got the cast off about a week and a half ago. So uh, he's one that really kind of has jumped out in practice and his approach. And, you know, so I wouldn't be surprised, like I told you guys a few weeks ago about uh, Marcus and the Day Day. You know, Day Day's still a work in progress. And, you know, I think he has all the talent in the world. He's a guy that should be able to help us. But, you know, as with anything in our program, you know, as you do things the right way, good things happen. We just got to continue to develop day day, uh, the work ethic, doing things the right way off the field. And he's got a chance to be, have a bright future for us. And I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, we're able to get it out of him. Thank you. Time for one or two more. All right. No, we're good. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Thanks. Players, one